a dear friend and partner for um, Everyone On. Norma Fernandez is the CEO of Everyone On. We've always known that digital literacy and digital equity are have been important. And now those of those those of us who did not know that now understand it. And um, the mission of Everyone On is to create social and economic opportunity. Uh, connecting low-income families to affordable internet services and computers and and supporting digital literacy training. So with that, thank you so much, Norma, for being here. You have always been uh, a part of this conversation and your voice and your talent uh, in this mix is critically important. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you for, for having us tonight. Um, we are happy to be here with you all and just sharing critical resources, especially when it comes to internet access, computers, and also finding out how you as a parent can improve your digital literacy um, skills. I won't talk too much about everyone on because Gloria, you, said you did such a great job describing our mission, probably better than me, so thank you so much. Um, but I do wanna give you a little context. Um, we are a national organization and we have been dedicated to eliminating the digital divide since 2012. Um, and in fact, there have been a lot of organizations here in California actually that have been attempting to address this digital divide um, because it has been deep and it has predominantly affected, unfortunately, black and brown communities or Latino communities. Um, and so that's why our mission is, is really about helping folks get connected to affordable internet solutions, affordable computers, and also increasingly delivering digital literacy trainings. And I will tell you, because of COVID-19, we have shifted to deliver these trainings in a virtual format given that we can't convene with people in person. Um, but we want to make sure that folks still have the opportunity to learn the critical basic computer skills to help them navigate the internet. Um, as, as you might tell, we really believe internet access and digital literacy are among the most critical social justice issues of our time. I think you all know that too. Without having access to these tools, um, without digital skills, families, and in particular low-income families, are at a critical disadvantage. Um, and certainly before the pandemic, the digital divide and the digital skills gaps were present, um, but the pandemic certainly made it worse um, on all fronts, right? Because when we don't have access to these tools, when we don't have digital literacy skills, that means we're missing out on opportunities to communicate with teachers, with our doctors, to sign up for critical services online, um, you name it. This is why we're really committed to this mission, which is to create digital equity for all. And that's why we're thrilled to be here with you all to share some additional resources with you. Um, every day, as you can imagine, given the work that we do, um, we address questions from parents, from nonprofit partners, from schools, um, and many other organizations asking us, where can I find low cost internet options and computers for myself? or uh, the students that I help serve. So I'm happy to share the following resources with you. Um, and one is, in fact, uh, lives on our website, everyoneon.org. So we definitely encourage everyone to visit this site. On this website, you will find that we have aggregated low cost options across the country, including here in California. And by following three easy steps, the first one entering your zip code, which you see here at the bottom, um, that's the first step that you take. You enter your zip code. The next step is to answer one eligibility question. Um, we ask this question um, because many of the internet service providers that have low cost options do require you to verify your, your low income. So you're asked to select whether perhaps you have a student that receives national school lunch program or participates in the national school lunch pro program. Maybe uh, you or someone in your household receives food stamps or EBT or CalFresh. Um, or maybe someone in your family participates in um, SSI. And so we ask you that question, you select one or a few, whichever applies to you. And after you enter your zip code and answer that question, we show you which low cost internet option is available in your respective zip code. Um, and we show you all the details, for example, the cost, um, uh, how, what the application process is, 
Um, and so it's a helpful tool, not only for parents, but for school administrators, teachers, nonprofits that are working with parents that are looking for low cost internet service options. We also actually feature a few laptops and desktops because we know that it's critical to ensure that almost every person in the household has a device, right? As parents are probably now experiencing, while it's been great that students have um, additional support from their school, we know that sometimes service could slow down um, or that one computer is not enough for maybe two, three kids and adults in the household, which is why we think um, making sure that parents have access beyond the hotspot at home um, is critical and that you have more than one functioning computer at home. So with that, if you don't mind um, flipping to the other slide, I actually want to walk you through very quickly some of the options that exist in California. Please keep in mind that not all of these are going to be um, available in your respective community, right? So which is why we invite you to visit our, our tool on everyoneon.org so that you could enter your zip code and see which one may be available in your community. Access from AT&T, you may already be familiar with this one. It's $10 a month for anyone that meets this criteria listed on the left, which is pretty wide. Um, the application process is fairly easy. You could do it online. Um, you could upload um, a picture of any one of these, your SNAP card, SSI card, or you could also just call in the customer service line and they do have a line that's responsive to multiple languages and request an application to be mailed to you. Um, and then you could simply fill it out and return it with the verification documentation to AT&T. Next slide. The other option that you may be familiar with is Spectrum um, Internet Assist. Um, they also have a low cost option. Spectrum actually has one of the highest speeds. Um, and so if you are a, a household that maybe you're just operating on your personal hotspot through your smartphone or maybe the one that the school district gave you and you're feeling that pain, which we all do, that service is slow because all of you are using multiple devices. And I highly encourage you to sign up for one of these um, because it'll provide you that extra bandwidth and speed that you need to support all the technology activity that's happening at home. So Spectrum has one of the greatest. Um, next slide. Human, Human IT is one of our partners. They're also a nonprofit and they actually provide hotspots to families at a low cost. So perhaps, you know, you can't purchase a hotspot from one of the bigger providers. Uh, Human IT provides low cost monthly rates um, for, for families. The hotspots work on the Sprint network, also provide excellent speeds and you could connect anywhere between eight to 10 devices or computers or laptops to, to the hotspot. Next slide. And then there's Internet Essentials from Comcast. So some of you may be in Comcast territory. Know that there is a low cost option as well. As long as you meet any one of the criteria listed here on the screen on the left, um, you're eligible. Um, also excellent service. Many, if not all of these providers when the pandemic struck, did start offering two months of free service for new customers. And so if you had never had um, service with any one of these, um, you were in a position and maybe still be in a position, I think Comcast has extended their offer through the end of this year uh, to receive at least two months of re free service and then go ahead and transition to their low cost product. One thing I do want to share because it's a challenge that we heard and continue to hear a lot from families and it's very unfortunate um, that because many of these providers um, did offer two months of free service for new customers, they were promoting it, schools were promoting it, nonprofits were promoting it. And as a result, families were calling these providers, but they were calling the general customer service line, which meant that they were even though they were signing up for the two months of free service, at the end of the day, what they were really signing up for was a market rate product. So if you're one of those families, urge you to call back these providers and say, I want to make sure I actually sign up for the low cost product and not the market rate product so that when your two months of free service ends, you could transition to the low, low cost option. Otherwise, you might find yourself paying 40, 50, 60 dollars, whatever they charge a month. So definitely want to urge families to to make sure they're calling um, the low cost, uh, the, the customer service line for the low cost um, uh, programs. And you'll find all of this information on our website. Again, we provide you this everything that you just saw on these slides in terms of the specifications and the price points is what is on our website, as well as the customer service lines that pertain to the low cost offers. 
So we highly encourage you to do that. And then we also hear a lot from parents, and I think I've been monitoring the chat, um, you know, about wanting to learn how to navigate the internet, how to open up an email account, how to help their students um, um, explore distance learning and all the wonderful resources that they're going to be gaining in, in their classroom, but also beyond. And so we hear parents, um, we hear, you know, the need to, to build your digital literacy skills. Nowadays, it's almost impossible to not develop these skills for yourself because as you're all finding out, um, you need them not only for your students um, and your children, but for yourself to set up appointments, to sign up, to apply for jobs online, to communicate with your family and friends. And so we've put together this list of digital literacy resources that everyone on we actually use and promote across our programming programs. We find these to be very useful as well as options that are bilingual. Um, so first and foremost, I want to definitely drive you to our website, everyoneon.org. Again, um, you'll find under the tab listed what we do, our digital learning center. Within that digital learning center, we provide actually access to free and accessible content um, that is on computer basics, email basics, financial literacy, uh, telehealth. Um, we've curated this for for our customers for you all um, and then of course there are you know the big names that we all know microsoft and girl and google um, both of these companies actually have very wonderful um, um, and free um, content and videos um, that you all could uh, view um, they range from like a few minutes to over an hour and again they're free i think that's the key thing here they're free um, they're highly vetted. Um, they're oftentimes also in Spanish if you need them in Spanish. And so these could be wonderful resources for you so that you could start learning just the basics of the internet. Um, also want to um, encourage folks to check out these options um, in Spanish specifically that we've listed here. And also definitely want to encourage everyone to check out Common Sense Media. I am a big fan of Common Sense Media. Some of you may already be familiar with them. They have wonderful uh, repository of resources and specifically build something around the pandemic and that's their wide open school um, platform. So if you visit their website, um, you'll find that they've actually curated specific resources for the different grades, K through three, fifth through seventh, etc. Um, and also those are available in Spanish. Um, I do want to quickly share that um, even though we're a national organization, there's two of us that are based here in California, myself included. I'm in Los Angeles. Um, we will be doing work in the Bay Area, specifically San Jose, in the coming months, and we'll be offering virtual digital literacy trainings to parents actually in the area. So if you live in San Jose or the adjacent Bay Area, um, we will definitely be communicating um, to you via Pique, we hope, um, to share when we will be having these virtual digital literacy um, workshops that will be focused around helping you um, navigate and uh, take control of the internet for yourself. Thank you. Norma, thank you so much. Uh,